first, it's just great to be here. I appreciate everybody taking a moment. I know you'll do anything to get away from your desk for an hour. So uh, thank you for coming down. Also to those who are joining the live stream at our regional campuses, at IUPUI, at the medical education centers, uh, perhaps some of our IT community partners and schools and administrative units have tuned in. So welcome to everyone. Now, uh, our, our talk today is Renewing IU. I want to begin with just clearly an apology that is needed in advance in that there is so much going on. I have, uh, you got the update yesterday, we have whittled this down to three and a half hours. So <laughs> in three and a half hours, we will not be able to address everything that you and your team are doing. Forgive my oversight, we, we have lots of uh, opportunities to communicate, but I'm gonna run as quickly as I can through just a, you know, just partially a set of things going on here at Indiana University as we renew. And I'll ask again in advance for your grace, if I don't get to the thing that you've been working on very hard, it's not that I'm unaware, it's just we've got a capacity issue here of how many things that we can talk about. So in renewing IU, I want to lead off by saying one of the most important things we renew is our people. Uh, last week, the president made an announcement of some of the leadership moves. I'm delighted that uh, Vice President, now was AVP, John Whelan, has moved to being Vice President for HR. The trustees have strongly endorsed that we uh, have a VP for HR. Michael's been thinking about this for a long time. That's a really great move. Professor Hannah Buxbaum, who had been the interim dean for the Maurer School, she's a John Schiller Chair uh, in, in Ethics. She's taking over International Affairs as David Zeret retires. Mike Sample, a long-serving servant of the university who has steered us through government relations and the financial downturn and all that has happened. And you only need to look at states around us to see how relatively well Indiana University has done with the citizens of Indiana and the General Assembly. And Mike and his team, uh, Jeff Lender, have done a phenomenal job. He announced his plans to retire. Uh, unlike uh, some institutions not too far away from us that have had a kind of a revolving door of a bunch of people, we were able to very smoothly make this transition. Bill Steffen had done government relations for Clarion, which is now IU Health, uh, for IU some years ago, already well known in the State House. So he and Mike will be doing a, a very uh, gentle conversion over this next year as we go into the long session of the General Assembly. Uh, some of you may have heard I picked up some other work too. Uh, I will, the president has asked me to establish the office for, the office of vice president for communication and marketing. Uh, communication and marketing teams, they've been with government affairs at one point in history, they've been with the vice president for engagement at another point in history, and the maturity of the university is now that that unit really merits uh, a vice president to oversee it. So I'm going to double hat there. Some of you have heard we're doing this thing called Salesforce, there'll be a little overlap. In that, in that as we go along. So uh, these are two distinct portfolios. You've seen the entire plan. I'm gonna be vice president of that and vice president of this. M many of you know that uh, I did the interim thing with the uh, Dean of Informatics, uh, School of Informatics Computing and now Engineering for a while and that worked just fine. And the reason we can do this is so important. Uh, we can do this because of such a strong team here. Because of you guys, strong teams, and our, our, our staff, our supervisors, managers, directors, and particularly the AVP team uh, that helps lead this place. So I expect a lot of continuity here. Also renewal at our uh, chancellors and deans. Jan Joseph at South Bend has, was uh, confirmed by the trustees last Friday as interim chancellor. I met Lem Watson, who will be the dean of the School of Education at Bloomington. As you may know, because of mission differentiation, some between the schools, rather than having a single dean across both schools, they will be more like our, our law schools, where there are separate missions, separate deans. So Lem's coming in as a dean for uh, Bloomington, Jesse Menendez coming in for the uh, School of Education, founding dean as it goes independent at IUPUI. Uh, Nan Goggin coming in for the Heron School of Art. She is also coming from the Big Ten. She was at the University of Illinois, Urbana, Champaign. 
Those of you who are alumni of the university, and I know we have some IU graduates in this audience, uh, if you have not voted, may I encourage you to do so. Uh, our trustees, our board is the best I have ever seen in structure. I wouldn't trade it for any other structure that I've seen at any other university. We have nine trustees. Five are appointed by the governor on rotating three-year terms. One is appointed as a student trustee on a two-year term. And then the other three are elected by the graduates of Indiana University, all campuses. So if you have not voted, please go do so. You go to the Alumni Association, you'll find your way to do it. Candidates and statements are there. I think there's, I don't know, like six or seven running. So there's a, a bunch of them running. So I encourage you to please go vote. Another thing that we're adding is a new university chief privacy officer. Uh, as many of you know, Sarah Chambers has ably led this within what UITS had purview over for many years. Uh, Vice President for Research Fred Kate, also a law professor. Fred has been riding and howling at the moon for about uh, 15 years on the notion of information privacy and policy and corporate governance around it. And we've reached a point where the university, we really need to mature how we think about uh, not only legal compliance with HIPAA and FERPAs and BERPAs and all the other laws out there, but how we think about this uh, in relationship with IU Health, the clinical practices, uh, a lot going on. So it has been decided to create a new university chief privacy officer reporting to the general counsel and to myself. Uh, jointly supervised by the Dean of the School of Medicine and the Vice President for Research and, and us. So this is a big task. Uh, we are down to finalists. We did a national search for this. So this is an important role because a lot of things and systems that we run, we have to be compliant and ensure that our procedures and everything that we're doing out here to help the university, we've got privacy uh, in order. So you'll be hearing more about that coming soon. Again, on the people side, the engagement survey. I hope you've been able to attend maybe one of the workshops that Deb Allmeyer and her team have done. IU results over here on the left, UITS results on the right. First thing, I'm delighted almost 600 of you responded to this. That's a good, strong sample size. We're about just shy of 1,100 full-time staff at any given moment and about 400 or 450 part-time. In general, here's a few big broad points. Um, we are one of the highest performing units at IU, and particularly for being one of the largest employing units at IU. So kudos to you for the culture that you're creating here and what we're trying to achieve. There's some areas where we stand out and really happy about, and you can add these numbers together and, and see uh, here in, in this one, we've got about 80%. They feel working here that someone cares about them, and I hope all the way through our line uh, of people that we do care uh, about each other. So that's a really strong one. Uh, as a social science researcher, I don't know what the hell this is doing on here. Uh, best friend, I, I, I don't, there is no compulsion for you to have your best friend here. As a matter of fact, I hope our culture enables you to have a life, and, and it, you meet other people, and you like them. Uh, and it makes you happy at home, and you come here, and you're happy. So um, I, I have refuted that point. I don't understand it. I don't believe Gallup when they assert this. They have not yet provided evidence. So that just is what it is. So, but if you find your best friend here, too, awesome. Um, so uh, bought into the mission. Uh, Debbie Allmeyer, the HR team, Juliana, et cetera. We're, we'll, we have some task forces we're spinning up. We want to work on this. We want to be a great place to work. And that takes everybody throughout the organization to help tune that. Uh, I'm delighted we've had a, a great year of some uh, awards. Uh, Professor Stacy Maroney had an exceptional year, being honored by the president, a university-wide gala, celebration of distinguished teaching and service. I was there with her, with her whole family, with the provost, it was outstanding. And then just a month later, uh, uh, Facet, she won the PA Mac uh, Award. Uh, for service and excellence uh, with, with FACET. Here you see uh, Kathy, Chris, the Salesforce team. I got to be with them out in D.C. This was before the Salesforce deal was done. Uh, the recognition was for the work that they had done in gathering the many tribes of IU 
and which I'll show you more about that in a moment. It was a community-based award. They were voted by their peers to receive that in the team. I don't know if Kalina is here or not. Uh, she has received a WINS uh, awardee to go to the supercomputing conference of what we call SC. Uh, we are 21 years of IU having a, a presence, a major presence at SC. The booth that we run there that uh, was done by the communications office, it is stunning and beautiful, and it makes a statement of pride in Indiana University. Uh, we partner that with the School of Informatics, Computing, and Engineering. The networks team is there. International Networks group is there. And so here's what that looks like in uh, Matt and company that we, we've earned our way in the pecking rights of supercomputing to a really premium location because you have to earn your stripes over years for where you're placed. But just a phenomenal representation of research and service at uh, the nation's largest conference in high-performance high computing. Uh, I'm glad more of our team are going to be able to go and be an awardee there. So who remembers June 24th, 1998 and what happened? That would be next Sunday. Who remembers? Because we have a, a whole series of events coming up this year, being a 20-year birthday of a, uh, an important date on June 24th, 1998, we inked the contract for Indiana University to be the network operations center for this thing called the Abilene Network that wasn't really a thing yet. And today we take Internet 2 for granted. Multiple 100 gig connections coming into Indiana University, our connection to cloud services, physicists being able to move massive data sets off the collider in Europe. But that was not a given that that would be in Indiana. As a matter of fact, it might have been IBM running it. They, they were toying with a bit and a few others. But the team here won it, and it really led to 20-plus years later. The global knock, over 100 jobs here in Indiana. So I'm really, really delighted about that. Uh, this fall, we will celebrate the anniversary of TransPAC. That was Grant, uh, then Vice President McRobbie, led $10 million to connect U.S. scientific networks to Asia-Pacific. Uh, and that has been now renewed three times. We'll be in 20 years of IU winning and running that. Jennifer and her team, formerly Jim Williams, uh, before he retired, done a phenomenal job with that. Uh, I want to welcome uh, from IUPUI the FIADS group that uh, joined UITS. Uh, they've uh, been housed, some of them with Ranji in, in uh, uh, Enterprise Systems, some of them with Kathy's group in client services and support, and we're, we continue to welcome folks who come our, our way. Now, if you feel tired in all that you've been doing for the university, uh, Dan got out his calculator, and he calculated years of service here amongst you guys. So we have been at this for 12,300 years, <laughs> collectively. Uh, I sat down at a trustee meeting, I'll, I'll uh, re reference the network master plan in a moment, uh, sitting there with some of our team, and, and, and I told the trustees, I said, apart from me, count me out, sitting at the table with me is just shy of 100 years of employee experience and commitment to Indiana University. And I really, I am thankful for those of you who choose to build your career here. Now, Dan likes to illustrate, you know, what does that mean? Um, so if we backed up 12,000 years, the UK was still connected to Europe, and he's not referring to Brexit. He means a, a landmass uh, connection. <laughs> Long Island, not an island. You could walk from Asia to North America if you had time. But I get an idea of what's going on around here and even the depth and breadth uh, each week. We have this little uh, newsletter in the in the Austin Vice President, and some of you helped put this together. And it's what's going on in, you know, uh, uh, learning technologies, what's going on in client su support, what's going on with MDPI, et cetera. And I read through this, and I read through this, and I read through it. And so like last week, there were 42 different vendors and companies referenced in it. That's how many thingies in one week we were trying to integrate, upgrade, patch, retire, and work on to keep this all running for Indiana University. I'm excited about statewide this year. I'll premiere the uh, 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 logo here. Maria may smack me. She's still tuning it a bit, but I, I, I ran with what I had. Uh, last year, we talked about in the age of the smart machine. 
how machine learning, artificial intelligence is coming. It's going to reshape how we think about uh, work. Shoshana Zuboff, I hope you enjoyed her and her fairly profound thoughts about this. Her new book is out. She's written a lot. So this year, we want to take some of what we talked about at 100,000 feet, and we want to bring it down. Okay, the machine is happening. You know, just look around you. Look at products and services around you. So what does that mean, the machine and me? as we go forward. And that's what we're going to build statewide around this year. I am ecstatic that we have Mae Jeminson coming. If you have, uh, some of you may have attended Internet 2 Global Summit uh, a couple years ago. May is a, a, a first African-American female astronaut. She's an MD. She's wicked smart. And she is perhaps the best person I have ever heard at making the case for let's bring everybody along. So I'm very, very excited to have her statewide will be great. And we even have some surprise guests who are going to be joining us as well. Okay, that's a quick run through people. Now on to facilities. We got a lot going on. Uh, in August, we will dedicate the Stone Family Center for Health Sciences down in Evansville. I can't tell you what a, an anchor in the center of downtown Evansville, this is going to be. It is renewing. Evansville kind of got into uh, almost suburban flight where the core had been somewhat hollowed out. This is truly uh, transformative for this community. It will be a massive celebration with the mayor, uh, a naming gift from uh, Bill and Mary Stone for this. We're, we're occupying it with several other institutions, with IU Health, a big transformative investment in Evansville. Uh, if you've noticed next door, they're stacking trailers, they're stirring dirt, they're interrupting our traffic flows. Um, so for the, uh, if you've not looked north or you're on the video at a regional campus, uh, the Regional Academic Health Center is starting to become a thing. You see more and more activity. Uh, my perception without knowledge is that IU Health is fussing with the contractors and negotiating, you know, when you're building a $350 million building, you ought to get the contract right. So uh, got, that's the academic health center here. And then this will be IU's building on the front where we'll put uh, uh, the medical, uh, if you're studying to be an MD, the medical education program, speech and hearing, nursing program, uh, enabling growth in, in all of those areas. Fort Wayne. Um, the greatest tragedy is that the Indiana Hoosiers will go down the basketball team as never again having a chance to beat IPFW <laughs> after having lost to them inexplicably twice. So uh, <laughs> IPFW no longer exists July 1. It is IU Fort Wayne. It is Purdue University Fort Wayne. We are running the health sciences programs uh, there. Uh, this is coordinated out of IUPUI, just like the Columbus Learning Center is coordinated out of IUPUI. Lots of branding up there, lots of rolling out IU. And I know a number of you have been pretty deeply involved in the administrative systems change because we haven't added a, another organizational unit in a long time. So that was a big lift with PeopleSoft, Lori Sullivan and uh, her team. Uh, excellent work there. Uh, I could spend an, an hour going through the renewal of facilities. We have such a renewal of facilities across the university. Uh, IUPUI, uh, this one's important to us. Uh, here's the information, uh, ICTC building, uh, where you used to uh, look for a parking place, will um, soon become the new uh, multidisciplinary research uh, and classroom building, much needed. This follows the expansion of the science and engineering laboratory building there. This space very much needed at IUPUI. Uh, the uh, gym here next door to us with the construction of uh, Wilkinson Hall for wrestling and volleyball. That will complete the consolidation of the athletics campus at Bloomington. So that is a really big move, uh, a generous naming gift from IU alumnus Jay Wilkinson. Uh, Bloomington will have renewed in its entirety all the residential halls by the bicentennial. That has been a major lift adding another 750 uh, bed new residence hall uh, on the west side of Fee Lane coming uh, probably in a year or so. Incoming in, uh, freshman class here at Bloomington will probably again be in the 8,000 range. So if you wonder why 10th Street is uh, impassable, uh, again, you will know why. And then the granddaddy building of all here at Ballantyne uh, under renovation, uh, that is taking, uh, Ballantyne has, 
what, about 75 classrooms in it roughly, taking half of it offline for one year, half for another, taking 35 classrooms, 37 classrooms offline for a year is a big thing around here in the core of campus. So the provost's office, the learning technologies team really scrambling on that. You know, I can go on and on, but by the time we get to the bicentennial, which we are literally, you know, that's January 20th of 2020, we are roughly 19 months out from the bicentennial date. We'll have a bicentennial year, of course. But the university, uh, under President McRobbie, uh, since he took over, we will have completed $2 billion in capital refresh. And that is fixing things, fixing roofs, for re rehabbing old buildings. Some of you know Franklin Hall. We were in for a long time and how crappy that what used to be the reading room was out there. It's now a glorious uh, space for the media school. So over $2 billion of renewal in physical space. That includes us. We're renewing some of our space as well. Uh, the Global Knock building next door, you know, the, the back of it's done. I hope you've been over there if you haven't. The front half is a mess. Our front third is a mess. It'll be uh, uh, tidied up and finished, I think, August. Someone knows, is that right? Yep. In August, I'm sure we'll have a little grand opening over there. But our growth in um, uh, Global Knock, the Ren ISAC is co-locating with them. OmniSoc will be over there. I'll speak to that in a moment. So more space renewal. Uh, for those of you who spend part of your time or you live at the ICTC building, that building was conceived of a design in 1999. So almost 20 years ago, the world has evolved a lot. Uh, the School of Informatics and Computing has strong enrollment growth at the IUPUI campus, as you can imagine. They are dying for space. They're in a bunch of rental buildings scattered all over. And so we had an opportunity. We had a long discussion. Some of you participated in it. Uh, we are going to release the fourth floor. Uh, that building to uh, School of Informatics for academic space. We will consolidate onto 0, 1, 2, and 3. We'll move the global knock down to the first floor. I'm very excited about this. Behind this wall, we have the knock. You walk by it. You see it from time to time. It's really good to show people what we do. We're going to put something like that on the ground floor so that uh, that STC that's down at the end, that student classroom, I want IUPUI students walking by there seeing people working in there with signs that say jobs at UITS, build your career uh, here. So very excited about that. The trustees approved uh, this plan. We got a lot of work to figure out the details. So I appreciate those who are based at IUPUI. If you will engage with the teams as we figure this out. So here you go, $2 billion of repair and rehabilitation. Uh, I'm going to show you in a moment the renewal of the network, renewal of classrooms. We'll touch on finances, renewal of uh, communications infrastructure with Salesforce and cybersecurity stuff as we renew the infrastructure that enables research and education in our core mission. So here's a slide from the Network Master Plan we presented to the trustees just two months ago. Uh, this was from the original presentation to them in 2009 where we said we're going to renovate about 351 buildings, 78,000 jacks. We're going to bring it up to code compliance. We're going to get out of the coaxial TV business. We're going to pull out old cables. We don't even know what they are anymore. We're going to bring this stuff up, a, a, a resilient network, a dual homing for buildings. So if a backhoe gets adventurous, you know, we don't lose a building uh, that day. And uh, we said there were 78,000 jacks. The networks team on IU is now managing 206,000 jacks, and people expect each of them to work. So this is really an important thing. Likewise, we had uh, plans this thick. 32 people, I believe, worked on the original team that did the work, down to the building, the room, the jack. It looked like it was going to cost $172 million. We insourced and worked uh, a lot of the design within UITS rather than outsourcing it. We will finish that plan for $95 million. This was a trustee pleaser, I, I, I assure you. <laughs> and uh, uh, we also, uh, great kudos to our regional IT teams led by Beth Van Gordon. They have worked out, uh, th those campuses are much younger. They don't have 200 and 150 year old buildings in general. But Beth has worked out a detailed plan that really probably by 2022, we will have refreshed the entirety of the network on our regional campuses as well. Very important. 
Uh, we did a little math. I think this is an important one. On Bloomington alone, the cable that has been installed could roll from Boston to L.A. and back to Palm Springs. That's a lot of wire, and that's been already put in. This is also a slide from uh, uh, just last Friday, presented to, last Thursday, presented to the trustees. Stacy was with me. The UITS supported classrooms team, 911 rooms that we oversee that faculty walk in and expect them to work uh, every time. You'll notice their percent converted to digital. Our regional campuses are mostly already all converted. They got just a little bit more work to do. I don't know how the VGA connector on your laptop is, but you, know, you don't need a VGA connector anymore. So uh, part of this includes for Bloomington and IUPUI, a $5 million refresh over three years, bringing all those classrooms, uh, not just replacing projectors, we do that when they die anyway and life cycle fund them, but all the core. So you walk in, it is a digital room now. It's not analog conversion and screwing up your slides and things like that putting in hearing assistance in those rooms for people who have uh, hearing aids and other devices that can pick up um, the, the uh, signals that those rooms now can emit, projectors in increasing our safety, that in the event of an emergency notification or some active shooter or something crazy going on, we can take over the projector and broadcast a message into those classrooms. So a big refresh of classrooms, but get your head around it, 911 of these rooms. It's remarkable, and you see the numbers across the, the campuses. Stacy and her team, again, are leading the Mosaic Initiative to turn more of those into active learning rooms, so it's not like the experience you're having right now, but you actually go in and in, engage in constructivist exercises. They're remarkable facilities. If you have not visited the student building here on the Bloomington campus, it remains um, you know, I, I really think about leaving you guys, going back to the Kelly School, and just getting that room to teach in because it is just that phenomenal uh, of a classroom. Uh, likewise, it's not just classrooms, but it's uh, informal learning spaces, student technology centers. See, there are 2.8 million logins a year. Um, you can see the number of uh, locations, 220. The number of seats, 2848. These are still heavily used. And it's interesting to note that in many cases, our students have everything they need at home with their laptop and a Comcast connection, should it be up. That they can connect to, to anything that they, they need. But they want to study together. They want, to, whether it's the social or avoiding distractions at home, you go to the Wells Library. Go to study spaces up and down the, bu the business building and SPIA building at IUPUI, some that have been down on the regional campuses. They're full of students at all hours of the day and night. So these are important spaces that we're doing. All right, let's talk money, finances. You are working at a very fiscally healthy university, and I want you to know that. Uh, John Sade and I, Vice President for Finance and Chief Financial Officer, presented the budget to the trustees at the last meeting. This has been approved. Uh, as you can see, we're slight growth, $3.7 billion entity. That does not include the hospital system. There's a separate legal entity, about a $6 billion healthcare delivery system. Uh, also, if you caught the news about two weeks ago, uh, IU was again rated by both uh, credit rating agencies as AAA. We are one of only seven public universities with the AAA rating. I want to read to you the comments of the rating agencies. Standard & Poor's cited IU's multi-campus system, large and stable enrollment profile, positive financial operations, excellent fundraising record, and exceptional fiscal planning amongst the reasons for the AAA rating. Moody's service offered similar positive feedback, writing in its report, quote, the stable outlook reflects expectations of strong student demand, strong research activity, adequate operating cash flow, ample liquidity, and uh, moderate additional debt. This is at a time when the rating agencies are starting to notch down the bonds of many institutions, worried about a variety of things, not the least of which is a smaller population. We have fewer graduating seniors in the years ahead. And you can do the math. Through the recession, 2008, 9, 10, fewer pregnancies. So we have a, a bit of a dip coming. 
in total enrollment. But very strong uh, budget for the university. Here is what we are doing within UITS. Uh, the entirety of our shop, if you count everything, and there's a little duplication in there of chargeback, counted maybe uh, more than, than once when we, we bill ourselves for things. But we're about $180 million a year operation. Note that $33 million of that is work that you guys take on in contracts and grants. Our work for Internet 2, work that we do uh, on behalf of the nation, work with, with NOAA, some operations now we're spending up in OmniSoc. So you can see that about a sixth of our budget there uh, comes from work that, that we're able to do our work for IU and build competencies on top of that, that others find your expertise valuable enough that they want to source that work at Indiana University. You notice the top line up here, about 53 million. That has been fairly flat for a very, very long time. A little bit of an uptick along the way, a little bit of inflation. And that is a really strong storyline because what you see here also, when I talk to folks about this, is with life cycle funding, you know, it was recommendation number one of the 1998 IT strategic plan. You know, let's pay as we go. Let's quit pretending that computers get old or networks have to be upgraded uh, and trying to, you know, finagle and buy them out of year-end salary savings, you know, when we can. So no way to run a railroad. So as you know, uh, we, we as, as well as we can, we fiscally manage with life cycle funding. That's why we could do that network upgrade. That's why we can renew, re renew these classrooms because we're not coming up every year trying to figure out how to do it. So this is roughly where does the money come from? Where does the money go? We watch this very carefully over time. Second thing is we are starting our latest round of ERC. Uh, Michael started this when he first came here in 1997. That is the Expenditure Review Committee, which no one says that anymore. We just call it ERC. This is ERC number, does Doug here, does he know? ER number six, round six. So what that means is we look at things where we can build some efficiency and we reduce cost in those things. And we take that money and recycle it and invest in things where we have new requirements. You, no secret, over the last 10 years, we've had to invest more in security. We've had to invest more in, a, in compliance. We've had to invest more in research computing. We've invested more, when you look at the student system, there's not a thing called the student system. It's a blob of 63 things that are glued together that we call the student system. We bought a lot more thingies that we needed uh, over time. So that's where that money comes from, is we curtail things that uh, we need less of, we invest in things that we need more of. And what that does is it creates a lot of career mobility here. So I, I had uh, HR, Debbie and her team pull the numbers. In this, in FY18, we have hired 105 new people into UITS. 57 people have moved jobs, 83 have been reclassified, and in full disclosure and candor, we've had 14 rifts of, of positions, but eight of them landed in another spot in UITS. So a lot of mobility in what we're doing here. Okay, you keeping up? I'll talk faster. Okay, this is a CRM. A lot of work to be done here. In January, we signed uh, Salesforce's largest University Enterprise Licensing Deal. Uh, we negotiated with our friends at Salesforce for five years to get to this point. We asserted offers, they asserted offers, and we realized we were not on the same planet. But uh, ultimately, we got to the place that uh, it would work. And they had confidence to do the deal with IU because they know we know how to roll out things broadly. And this will involve the whole of IU, uh, we already have all of the students uh, on all campuses being recruited and admitted based on Salesforce, except Bloomington. They've got another little situation here we'll get, we'll get through. But uh, momentum here is phenomenal. So I want to walk you through it. If you're dozing, pay attention. So here, here's the diagram that helped us get our head around where we were at. So you got three columns here. You're not yet at IU. You are at IU or you were at IU. Then a couple of rows here. You're an undergrad that we're trying to get you to come. You're a graduate, we're trying to get you to come. Or it's corporate relations or just general marketing and communication stuff. So over here, you were at IU. We got the foundation, 
IU Foundation and IU Alumni Association. We're in the middle of a $3 billion capital campaign. We are already well north of the low $2 billion number in funds that have been raised and committed. I should call out, uh, among the faculty and staff, the employees of Indiana University, over 15,000 have made contributions to the Bicentennial Campaign, totaling over $150 million committed. So the staff of Indiana University have been very involved. This is not the time to make a change at the foundation. So we're going to get on through. they got a lot running there. Alumni does as well. So let's take that and we'll leave that one to the side. This is the amoeba, as we refer to it, or the blob. Uh, the Chris Tompkins, Kathy, uh, this big thing in the middle here is the Salesforce coalition that we were able to put together by putting a little money into it and mostly going around begging uh, with other units. So we assembled this group, 221 units adopted, over 300 active users, 1.3 million constituent records in there already, 4,000 campaigns running. Uh, the HR centers on all campuses, if you've got a, an issue with HR or something's not right, you need them to do something, they, they manage it through Salesforce. But you also see the measles. These are Salesforce measles. We have some bumps breaking out at, at IU. These are small instances of Salesforce. So at the trustee meeting, I said, so you know, we've got trustee Harry Gonzo. And I said, trustee Gonzo, you may be represented here, and your Harold here, and your Harry and Mary over here. And... So we want to work to figure out how to, how to pull those uh, together. Now, if you add in the whole of what's going on with CRM at IU, we documented over 50 different instances of CRM activity, including a bunch of annoying things down here like MailChimps and, and other things. So uh, we're taking those out because they terrify me regarding spam and phishing and things such as that. But you can see we already had the beginning of what we had long wanted, and that is from the early contact, the kid coming to a camp, being the son or the daughter of an alumnus, some early contact with a person through his or her life of engagement with Indiana University. So CRM for universities is a little bit different than CRM for a typical company because a company often uses CRM to manage sales to its customers. Customers don't often turn into employees and then turn back into suppliers and then they turn into actually buyers again. But if you think about the life journey of a student, you know, maybe attend a camp, they're a prospective student, they, they may go to one of our campuses, graduate, they may become an alumnus, they may loop back into graduate school, maybe through IU Online, they get involved in the Alumni Association. So we want this journey to work across, they may work for Eli Lilly for a while, their family, their uncle may be involved with IU. We, we need to get a better handle on this, and Salesforce is going to enable us to do this. So I'm going to call Kathy up now to give a short two-hour tutorial on <laughs> what Salesforce actually is. Um, you, we think of Salesforce as a thing. It's not. You want to order Salesforce? There's 800 different product line item numbers if you're ordering Salesforce. So we did an enterprise license for the stuff that we use mostly. This is uh, what was Exact Target, an Indiana company. You know, uh, Salesforce acquired Scott Dorsey's company. And this is the CRM, what's now been rebranded Lightning. These are the pieces that we have bolted on. Some schools and departments, may know, and then there's 6,000 aftermarket add-ons that you can go. It's just like, you know, your pickup truck. You know, you want to put a deer rack in it? You can do that. There's a whole bunch of aftermarket stuff. So this is the whole of the uh, Salesforce Enterprise Agreement. What that means is... Uh, whether it's IU Fort Wayne, uh, the Medical Education Center in Evansville, Evansville, the Heron School of Art at IUPUI, they can pick this up and run with it. We have already bought the whole of this infrastructure, and so we got a lot of work to do in continuing to mature it. Here you see what we're running with right now. Again, the award. I'm very proud of the team. Uh, this is also integrating this fall. We'll turn on SMS and text messaging. Some people prefer to interact with IU uh, through that. Uh, Chris and team, they have filled six Salesforce uh, positions. Got a couple more thereafter. It's a tough market to hire for Salesforce because everybody's rolling it out everywhere. But kudos for us that people are wanting to come work at Indiana University. So what's next? This is what we showed the trustees, the road ahead. Uh, this is a long journey. 
we're not going to take, you know, 30 years of IU behavior and practice and various systems and slam them into an Uber solution in one year. This is a journey. We got a lot of work to do. Just even in deduplication, you know, how many times is your name or address represented in various places? And so we got a lot of work to do, but we are off and running on this. And uh, kudos to the Salesforce a CRM implementation team. And I want to ask you across UITS, if you've got a business process that might fit in here, because it'll already know the constituents, we already have every enrolled student in it, we have every employee in it already, if that would make it easier for one of our constituents to interact with one of your services, let's take a look. Maybe there's something in here that we need to be making greater use. Okay, renewing IU, systems and services. This is where we honestly could spend all day, but here we go. We've rebranded uh, HelpNet, UITS Tech Select. You saw that. Uh, uh, EITS, Executive IT Services, uh, also closely affiliated with this, but our, our go-to market brands for the community are Tech Select, Services and Schools and Departments, and uh, Executive IT Services, taking care mostly of the Vice President offices uh, and keeping them very safe and secure. The Decision Support Initiative, you heard about this, we launched this in late 05, I believe that's right, Aaron, 05, uh, 06, he can't remember either. Um, this has been, I want you to hear me, this has been the most transformative thing that we have ever done to turn the oceans of data at Indiana University into information that people who are making decisions can, can make better decisions. This drives all the way down to the department chair level when they're allocating courses and figuring out what, do they, what they need. The first time we showed this, I think some of you have heard me say this before, we showed this to uh, the Bloomington deans, that's where we got it done first. There was literally a gasp in the room. They had never seen such data before. This is all published in ds.iu.edu for, for decision support. Go search on AM360. Look around. You'll learn something about your university. It integrates HR data, credit hour data, and financial data down to the unit level. It is remarkable, and we have a work queue on this that will reach from here to IUPUI as well. Uh, Laura and team leading uh, Project Recharge, um, travel system about to get better. Hopefully you've seen some of the uh, uh, information on that moving to Chrome River. Uh, procure to pay, simplifying procurement. Uh, we've already uh, upgraded the quality financial system, mostly a, a, a refresh of some of the skin and such, but renewal of core administrative systems. I get a lot of questions about cloud. You know, cloud schmoud is kind of how I, I say about it. Um, this is a very, very old concept. It is not a new concept. From the late 60s to the early 70s, there were service bureaus where there was a computer somewhere, and there was a phone wire and connection, and there was a device on the other end. And this pendulum has swung back and forth about every 15 years of shove it to someone else's computer. No, that's not working. Let's buy and we'll use it on our computer now. Well, that's getting complicated. Okay, let's shove it back to someone else's computer. So this is the game that's, that's being played. And, and our goal here is very, very clear. Smart sourcing. If it makes more sense for us to use something that is a cloud service, then I, I think we should do it. If it doesn't economically or strategically, because we've got a very capable data center here, we've got a really smart team, we understand our needs and requirements really well, then we'll do it here. We looked up, and I, um, if you take the number of computing hours consumed on Big Red 2 and Big Red 2 Plus, and you go benchmark the cost of consuming those hours, forget the storage. That makes it more complicated. Forget the input, uh, uh, egress, uh, in and out of data centers. Just on CPU hours alone, it would have cost almost double if our researchers had used Amazon in consuming those hours. And that is at Amazon's best educational pricing. So my point is, uh, we're uh, moving uh, to Canvas for teaching and learning, great thing. They're innovating, they're pushing in new features every three weeks in the cloud 
awesome. Some stuff we're going to do here. Some stuff we'll run for others. So that's our view. Uh, a little bit deep in the weeds here, but our data team, database team, very proud of them. Look what's happening with our Oracle database count. Oracle's an awesome product. It works really, really well, and it's super expensive. And there are substitutes for that now. And so we are putting in more and more substitutes where we don't need to pay those guys so much. We'll run something that costs a little bit less, and we'll use that money to pay for something new that we need to get done. The Unison Consortium, you've heard from this over, from time to time. Uh, we, uh, Unison is, uh, there are 11 uh, large universities. Uh, it is our cloud services aggregator and operator. So our Canvas contract is not with IU. Our Canvas contract, Unison negotiated for all of us in our deal with Canvas. Likewise, so we have tools called Pressbooks, faculty are authoring. We have the e-reader I'll speak to in a moment. And come this fall, we will turn on uh, the Unison uh, data platform. Many of you know uh, Rob Loudon, Associate Vice President for Enterprise Systems. He's been down there uh, part-time helping uh, the Unison Consortium in, in leading it. And Stacy can affirm the pace of what's coming out of that organization just continues to accelerate. So the Unison data platform is going to be the richest set of empirical data for understanding how students learn and improving how we teach anywhere. We got a lot of work to get that all turned on, uh, but we are working hard on it. Uh, Sarah is serving on the Privacy Council for uh, Unison. We've got folks here involved with Security Council for Unison. But instead of solving this one campus at a time, we're doing this together with the University of Florida, with the University of Michigan. You may recall a couple years ago, we had, statewide, we had that in, in the kickoff. It's been a big lift. It's taken a lot to get it together, but, but we have. And our e model is just killing it, literally, just killing it. Look at the numbers, the growth. You can uh, see the geometry yourself of what's happening. Uh, the credible number that we can defend with, uh, this is conservative, Indiana U University students avoided $4.2 million in course materials cost this year because of this. That's real money, $4.2 million, uh, and they had all the digital tools that go with it. Stacy and her team, again, phenomenal in rolling it out, and someone says, you talk like you wrote the book on it. Well, as a matter of fact, we did write the book on it. It's called ETEX 101. This was published recently, picked up and covered by the Chronicle. Now our friends at Ohio State, uh, the other units and members are all starting to pick up this model uh, and run with it. So media digitization and preservation, you see the white smoke continuing to come out of the factory uh, over there next door. Uh, they just passed their 300,000th item. Do you know how long it takes to run a tape backup for all of that? Dennis, how, what, how many months? About 15 months. Yeah, we are, uh, the research technologies team is doing another backup. We've got the data. Two locations. Our friends at the Wells Library are working very hard on the tools that allow you to search and discover all of that that can be played within collections and within copyright. So this is just remarkable. This is deeply partnered with uh, Sony. As you know, they've been great partners. And now we are past 5,000 films. Is that still the right number? I round up, you know. <laughs> For, yeah, I've been marketing that. Yeah, exactly. Well, hell, there's 7,000. We're near 7,000. <laughs> so we're renewing ourselves in cybersecurity because the world's just getting ickier out there. I mean, it just really is. Uh, the second best thing that we have ever done is move to duo two-factor authentication. I know what a crowd pleaser it is. Uh, as we uh, rolled it out, it gets expressed to me from time to time. Uh, we are running 176,000 active users of Duo, including our trustees, our president, and others. 7,000 users uh, using digitally signed email, and that better include every one of you. Uh, we're doing simulated phishing, as you know, and uh, we've got almost every system that matters 
behind two-factor now. So the Safe IT Task Force, broad group including communications, uh, you know, uh, enterprise folks, the security office, the policy office, they have done a phenomenal job on this. I want to give kudos to Dan Clarko for chairing that. Moving this change through this big organization and me not losing my head um, a as we did it. So kudos. So that's one of the really good things going on. The first best thing that we have ever done to reduce cyber risk at Indiana University was IC28. Again, not always a crowd pleaser, but IT28 was uh, remarkable in reducing the surface area of how many servers we had and where they were cared for into getting them into pr protected space and just reducing the number overall. So. Uh, we are into uh, round two, and uh, uh, Ian sort of saw Ian here somewhere leading this. We have decided to stagger the years rather than trying to boil the whole university every two years. We're going to do UITS one year, and we're going to do schools and administrative departments the other year. That makes the workload a lot more reasonable in getting through this. 28 units in uh, reporting right now. We'll get the rest of them in, uh, hopefully end of the month, early uh, uh, July. You can already see the goals, reducing the numbers of servers, uh, increasing the number of servers and percents that are in the data center getting into secure facilities. Uh, this is the most important thing that we could be doing. IT28 does allow, read it carefully, it does allow any school or administrative unit or perhaps even you to run a server and take care of it. You don't get to run a server without dedicating that you have sufficient resources, time, and expertise to take care of it. So th that's the core of the issue. And uh, this has been a big journey, it's very important, and I appreciate Ian and team, IT community partners, our school, academic units, and everyone that we're using to get on through this. Here's a preview, if you haven't seen it, sneak peek. Uh, the UXO office, working with a whole bunch of folks, we will be turning on the UITS Security Center. Uh, if you use Google, they've, they've done a really nice job. You can go to a place in Google and turn on and off and check your security help. At IU right now, we're kind of scattered everywhere. Some things are in IU accounts, some things are in other places, some things are with messaging. So we're making a security center where every user can go and turn things on or off in one consolidated view. It didn't fit at the bottom, so we stuck the rest of it over here. And people sometimes forget, oh, I didn't even remember I was in a group account. We were using that seven years ago. I need to just get myself out of that. Let's just reduce that. So uh, coming in August, I think that will be a big step forward. Uh, I hope you've caught up with our latest venture. This is the OmniSoc. Uh, the OmniSoc is a shared cybersecurity operations center. Uh, we raise capital from uh, Big Ten institutions, Nebraska, Northwestern, Purdue, and Rutgers. So we've got, you know, the end to end of the Big Ten from Nebraska to Rutgers. And what we're doing is we will take intrusion detection system data, NetFlow uh, metadata on packets, put it into a box here, combine it with security data, see if something bad's going on, report back to campuses their security operations, and address those matters. Uh, Tom Davis is leading this. Uh, this has been remarkable. There's tremendous interest in it out there. Nebraska started feeding data in yesterday. I, you went first. Uh, around early March, Nebraska is now feeding data in, and we'll be rolling the next few uh, weeks and months into getting the rest of folks on. Uh, I expect we'll have more of the Big Ten come in and others. We're running a workshop on SOX uh, next week up at IUPUI. We've got folks coming in from even outside of the U.S. for that to learn more about it. Uh, I don't know where this will go, but I will just kind of tickle your brain a little bit. There was a time when the global knock started, and what it really had was one thing called Internet 2 and a thing called Abilene Network. And as you know, our networks team now runs international networks. They run NOAA. They run eight or nine other states. Uh, it, and it's grown a whole bunch of jobs here in Indiana. Uh, my hope is that the OmniSoc, if this is the thing that higher ed needs, we may be able to grow a strong locus of security talent here. Uh, as we take on and source that work here. Many of our peers out there are very happy to say, we'd love to have Indiana doing that. And they only say that because they know you guys do such a great job. The governor's office is really uh, working hard on this. We have recruited 
uh, Cybertech Midwest. This is a conference that already goes on in Singapore. A big one goes on in Israel. Uh, I attended a, 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 a peer event of this in uh, uh, Tel Aviv two years ago, but we have recruited the, their first one here in the U.S. It's going to be in Indianapolis in a couple of months. Uh, we will be strong and present there. If that goes as well as they hope, then they hope to make the Midwest one of their key signature conferences on that. So coming up very soon. So that's a quick run through. 12,000 years of service to Indiana University. I haven't even touched on HR 2020. You hear about that from uh, our HR office, upgrades that we're doing to cyber infrastructure. We've got some good news for International Networks Group, I think, coming up fairly soon. I'll uh, hint here at Smart Machine Labs, something that I want us to get a little bit better of how we think about the future coming out of statewide last year. I haven't gotten it done yet, but it's in my inbox in queue. Renewing IU. Thank you for all that you do in service to the 100,000 plus students of Indiana University, the 25,000 faculty and staff, and in service to the state and the nation. I am personally proud to be at IU and here working with all of you. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of the things that I see going on every day and week across my desk here at UITS and for the university as a whole. Thank you.